hi y'all. <laughs> and I said, y'all, and I'm not from Texas. But I just want to, I'm humbled because yesterday I put up, I made a video and I put it up this morning about how I feel like I've said everything that needs to be said. But however, according to scripture, the Holy Spirit, he just doesn't let go. He didn't let go, even though I thought he was being quiet. And he quickened to me a vision that I had a while ago that I've not shared with you, that I think it's time to share with you. And he kind of quickened all this stuff, a lot of scriptures in here. So grab a cup of tea or something. Um, this one's going to be a little longer. I don't like to make long videos, but if you please bear with me and listen, it's important. These things that I share, I really feel is like a understanding that I get and not just for me, but actually, as I say over and over again, to share with you. Because he gives it to me, okay, great, you know, that helps my walk. But I want it to help your walk as well. Because these days, we are in the last days. And the scriptures give many, many um examples of what it's going to be like and I will share some of those examples with you but first of all in John 14 26 it says but the advocate the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name listen to this okay will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you so that's Jesus talking in John. He's telling <clears throat> the apostles and his disciples that after he dies and is crucified and is raised on the third day, the Holy Spirit will come. He's our advocate. He is for us, not against us ever. But he will also teach us things and remind us of things that he has said. And that's why I said it's important to bask in the presence of the Lord, to be aware of him, to just bask with him throughout your day. Fellowship with him. Okay, enough of that. So I'm going to go on here, and pretty soon I'll share my vision, but I want to put it in context so it will be clear, because not all visions, even though they happen in a nanosecond, with all the understanding and revelation of it, can be explained quickly. So in context, in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4 of this chapter, it starts out with, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or who is worshipped, so that he has God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So that's a context. We're, having, we're talking about the Antichrist, okay? So we understand what the chapter is about in these verses within the chapter, but I'm going to go down to 2 Thessalonians 2, chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 9 through 12. It says, Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So the Antichrist is coming after the working of Satan. And he's going to have all powers and signs and lying wonders. Okay, let that soak in. That's a huge deception. Okay, that is not God. It is the Antichrist. It's a huge deception. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, okay, all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved, saved to eternal life in the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion. He said it over and over here, three times. 
that they should believe a lie. Why? Because they might be damned. They're going to go to eternal hell and perish who believe not the truth. You can't get clearer than that. It's real, folks. But had pleasure, keyword, pleasure in unrighteousness. So let's go into the strong delusion here. Let's go into this deceitfulness. Okay, first I'm going to prelude my vision very quickly with some of my background. I was a war photographer, okay? And I saw mainstream news, namely CNN, set up with people that would be on headlines worldwide that created the delusion that it would be okay to bomb a population, literally. It can cause wars and deceptions. So in this vision was a photograph of Obama in a news article. And in this news article, he was somewhere doing something post-presidential. It, let's say, for example, I don't know where he was in that vision in the news, okay? But I'm giving you an example, like Canada. He was doing this good works, and it was all over the news. And at the same time, it's quickened to me the understanding that it, he wasn't really there. <laughs> but they had a photograph of him, and they had these huge articles plastered all over many news organizations that he was there. And he wasn't. They just took an old picture, put a background in it, and there he was. Thus the delusion. Now, that's interesting, isn't it? So I want to give some more history here. We are bombarded with news, and even more so now with our citizen journalism, mainstream news, People being reporters, vising as mainstream news. We have most likely other nations with lots of money behind them and others within our nation, America. Remember, there's an election coming. Remember the last election. How these people use the internet to bombard us full of all kinds of things, lies, deceptions. What's happening, this delusion? So we, we see, I saw a vision that the Lord quickened to me <clears throat> that it was all over the news as if it was true that Obama was somewhere doing something. It could be anybody somewhere doing something. What's going on now I want you to ask yourself that and pray about it with these riots and protests what triggered it what's keeping it going who is funding over 80 days of protests in Portland how can these people survive for this long continuously rioting they're not protesting. They're rioting. They're destroying things. A strong delusion so that they might believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. In Isaiah 55, 11, it says, So with all this delusion that the Father talked about to expect, for his word does not come back void. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Isaiah 55, 11. So what are we to do in these days of what seems real is not and what is right is wrong and what is wrong is right? And Isaiah 520 says, they say that what is right is wrong, 
and what is wrong is right. The black is white, and white is black. Bitter is sweet, and sweet is bitter. How do we discern the reality from the false reality? Where do we set our feet? I want you to remember, please remember this. We are soldiers of the kingdom, children of the Most High God, our Father through the sanctification of Jesus Christ. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places, Ephesians 6, 12. Paul goes on and provides instruction as what we as believers should do in 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 through 17. In verse 13, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto he called you, you I'm talking to, by our gospel to the attaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, what is it therefore? Brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word or our epistle. Stand fast. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, look up the word love, do a study, and hath given us an everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts, establish you in every good word and work. Now I'm going to go on to chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. So we know what to do and this is what it will be and what it is today. This know also that in the last days and if you listen to this, he's already saying this is in the last days. Okay, so listen. This is today. Times shall come. Written 2,000 years ago. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetousness. Boasters. Proud. Blasphemers. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy without natural affection. Truce breakers, you see that today out there in the riots? False accusers, you see that? Incontent, see that? Fierce, see that? Despisers of those that are good. They burned the Bible in downtown Portland. Traitors, heady, high-minded, Lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, as I mentioned here earlier, right, in 2 Thessalonians, that they should be alive and they will be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Traitors, okay. Ha Verse 5, having a form of godliness. Now that's even a greater deception. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What is that? Denying the power thereof is the power of the Holy Spirit, the truth in us. Right? But they have this. And you have a lot of, I am in a church, but I can't share these things. I'm not given a place to share what I'm sharing with you. In my home group, in my church, I don't know any other believer physically that I could sit down and share this study with you, with them. Okay? 
So such a form of godliness. Now, it says, though, from such turn away. All the other stuff ahead, you turn away. But right now, like in our churches, we can be, I don't know, I need the fellowship and they love the Lord and I'm not going to judge their hearts, okay? So I don't feel like I should turn away. They don't quite deny the power, but I don't see place for the power to happen right now. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts, ever learning, which is interesting, right? Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There's a lot of that in the church, right? There's a lot of that. Now as James and Jamborees withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Listen to what he went through. I'm going to read that again. Manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystria, Lystria, what persecutions I endured, endured, but out of all them the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You know, you guys, persecution comes in many ways. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Know what you're assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. So even if you turn into a believer in your 40s, you're a child of God, and then you learn. Okay? All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So, guys, God bless you. I know this has been long. Thank you for staying tuned, and I hope this helped you. Stand firm. Shalom.